cool hey guys so um for the first part we're going to look at modeling uh this pin here which basically acts as the pivot between the leg and this upper linkage um so the pin itself if i open this up it looks like this so this would be a bit of solid rod uh, that's been turned on the lathe uh, with some little grooves here and some chamfers so um go back to the main model so essentially um, I'll just grab a quick section view so we can click on this button here for a section view um, with the section view you can always flip the, the cutting plane by clicking these buttons you can drag this arrow uh, to sort of change the depth of the cutting plane so we'll just take a quick look at this pin and the sort of uh, components that it's interfacing with so with this pin here um, we've basically got so the pins, this thing that I've highlighted in blue. Uh, so on the pin, we've got the leg, uh, which pivots around the pin. We've got a bit of a spacer here. We've got these two uh, upper joint plates, and we've got a couple of ball bearings, um, one on either side here. Um, cool. And then there's also some circlips on the end. So um, I'll just show you what the circlips look like. So basically circlips are these little um, spring steel clips that go um, in this groove here. So what we've done, we've put a small groove, um, if you can see here, the shaft uh, itself has a small little groove cut into it for this circlip to sit in. And um, yeah, the circlip basically holds the, the pin in place, stops it sliding out of this joint and it holds the bearings um, so the bearings don't slide off more or less. So we've got a clip on either side and um, When we draw this part, I'll show you guys how to work out um, What the size of this groove needs to be for these circlips Cool, so let's um, let's get started on the part So we will um, Basically in the next few videos, we're going to work through building this assembly first, which is the upper upper link assembly um, and yeah, we're going to start with this pin here. Cool. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go up to File, and we're going to create a new part. We'll double click on that, and then we'll start a sketch by clicking this button, and we can just start this one maybe on the front plane. Cool. So to begin this sketch, I'm just going to um, sort of loosely draw in um, one half of the axle, because we'll probably use a revolve feature to draw this part. Um, so I'll just sort of roughly draw it in and then we'll dimension it later. So I'm going to draw it in like this. Um, I'm going to take care to place these lines kind of horizontally and vertically. Because um, what, what happens, it, as, you, as you can see, it's like a little yellow icon underneath the pencil. So that basically is going to add in a, a vertical constraint here as soon as I place the line. So, you know, if I had this line slightly on an angle like that, it wouldn't add that constraint. But if I put it roughly vertical, it'll snap to vertical and add the relation in for me, which will save time later. So let's click on that line there, and we'll go back to start. So this is basically like the side view of the shaft. Um, not to scale, but it's a good starting point. So what we'll do, um, We'll start to dimension this shaft. So uh, basically what I might do actually just to start with is let's go, if we click on the view button and go hide and show, we can turn on sketch relations and this will show me um, where all those automatic relations have been added already. So even though we've just drawn a bunch of lines, it's actually added in a heap of relations, uh, those little green things already, um, which are actually constraining these lines. Um, so it's good to turn that on so you can see what's happening behind the scenes. Um, it's also good to get the hang of, of uh, you, you basically manipulating relations as well because you can actually delete relations. So for example, if I wanted this line, um, if I didn't want this line to be vertical anymore, I could right click on this little icon and click delete. And now this line can be you know, at any sort of angle. Um, so we can make it vertical again, you can see it's added it back. So it's pretty simple really, uh, but yeah, it's just good to know how to do. Um, cool, so for this part, um, the P 
pin is a five millimeter radius. Um, so we're going to put five millimeters there. Um, what we could do, we know that this uh, distance here is also five millimeters, um, but there's a nicer way to do that um, because we don't want too many smart dimensions. So um, what I can do instead, I can click on this line, I can hold the shift key, click on this line, and I can click on this line. And then we can make them all collinear like that. And now they're all sort of collinear with that starting line, which is exactly what we want. And also, because we've added those together, they will now all move together as one. So we only need to change one dimension, and it changes all of those. So I'll also mention just briefly um, in this video, we won't probably mention this again as in the following videos because I'll assume you guys know this, but um, there's basically, you see how some of these lines are blue and some are black? So there's a difference between um, those lines. So the blue lines are able to move um, and the black lines are not. <laughs> so basically if a line is black, it means it's fully defined uh, which means that it's, it's location and orientation uh, relative to the sketch origin is fully defined. Whereas the blue lines, you can pick them up and move them around still. Which means that those blue lines could be in a random location, like in even an unwanted location. So essentially the idea is you go around, you continue to add um, dimensions and relations until all of your lines are fully defined. So ultimately you want to leave your sketches so that no lines are blue and all lines are black. So we'll just add in a couple more dimensions here. So um, I'll also add in uh, the circlip groove width which we'll set to 1.1 millimeters. And then again what we could do, we could put another 1.1 millimeters for this circlip groove but instead we can use relations. Um, so I'm going to click on this line here, hold the shift key, click on this line and set those to equal. Just like that. And now if I change the circlip groove later on, it'll change both of them, which is awesome. So really the aim is to have the least number of smart dimensions as possible and try and use relations wherever you can to avoid needing smart dimensions. Makes the sketches a lot easier to maintain. So like for example, if someone down the track was to open up your model and they want to make a quick change, say to like a length or a width or something like that, um, you know, if, you, if you've got smart dimensions scattered all over the place in a kind of messy way, it's going to be tricky to know how to, uh, where to start to change that model. Whereas if you've got the, few, the least number possible of these smart dimensions, and the relations are holding everything else together, it's a much, much easier uh, model to sort of understand and change later on. Because you always need to change parts um, most of the time, because things do go wrong um, and edits need to be made. So the idea is to make your models not just um, you know, represent the final size, but also drawn in a way that they're able to be maintained um, without them causing errors. So hopefully that's what I'm going to show you guys as well. So what we'll do, um, I'll also add in another dimension here. This is 1.5 millimeters from the end of the shaft to the start of the groove. And then again, I'm going to set this one here equal to this one here instead of adding another relation. So we'll do that. And then we'll drag this across. So for these circlip grooves, there's actually a, a special way um, of working out what size the grooves need to be. And I'll show you guys that really quickly. So this is a 10 millimeter diameter shaft. So this will be revolved in a minute. Um, so we've only drawn half of it. Hence, this is the radius, five millimeters. So for different size circlips, I'll bring it up quickly. So we get our circlips from somewhere called United Fasteners, which is a local place in Victoria. Um, if you navigate to their external circlip page and scroll down, You'll see they have lots of different circlips here that you can buy. The ones that we're looking for, uh, circlips are sold by the shaft size, not by the groove size. So we have a 10 millimeter shaft um, in here. So this is our shaft. 
with the circ clips on it. So I'll just isolate this quickly to show you guys. Um, so this is what it looks like. So we have a 10 millimeter shaft here, 10 millimeters, which means we buy a 10 millimeter circ clip for a 10 millimeter shaft. So if we look at our 10 millimeter circ clip here, we can see that there's a compliance here. So there's a standard uh, called DIN 471, which is the German standard. And um, that basically, the, the standard um, determines the, the, si the size of the exact dimensions of that circ clip um, that the manufacturer has to make it um, to be in accordance with. So if you look up, um, I'll link you guys this in the description as well. But basically you can look up PDFs for different standards. And this is the DIN 471 standard. So this is the external circ clip. So here's all my dimensions for this part. And a neat thing that it shows us, so if we go down to the 10 millimeter circ clip here, so D1 here is the shaft dimension, so 10 mil shaft. We have a circ clip thickness S of one millimeter. It says that our D2, which is the, uh, the sort of groove diameter, Groove, uh, groove diameter D2 for a 10 mil needs to be 9.6 millimeters. So we'll go back to our shaft here and we'll make this one here 9.6 divided by 2 because it's obviously half of that because we're revolving, revolving the part. So we end up with 4.8 radius there. And then for our width, I put in 1.1 before, but where I got 1.1 from was here. So it's got groove width minimum. We go to the 10 millimeter one, and it says 1.1 millimeters is the minimum groove width. So that's why we've used 1.1 millimeters. So this is a handy little table. Um, I'll chuck this in the description. Like I said, good link to chuck in your favorites. Um, yeah, I've got a bit of a, a favorites thing set up here where I've got all the different bolts and, and standards that we use, uh, which is really handy. So I might link that as well. Um, yeah, so this is really good. So whenever you're using a circ clip, it tells you what the groove dimensions need to be, which is brilliant. So now that we've got those groove dimensions, um, we'll just sort of make sure that this slot over here, uh, this groove is the same as well. So we'll make this and this, um, the bottom of those grooves collinear to save us from adding an extra dimension. And then we can see here that we've got some blue lines still. And if you're ever wondering, you know, why do I have blue lines still in my sketch? So why are some of my lines underdefined? Um, and the reason that is, is because, uh, well, the easiest way to find out why is just by picking up either a point or a line and trying to move it. And then you can see, okay, yep, so this moves in this direction. So we're going to have to add another um, smart dimension or relation to lock that um, so it's fully defined. So the final dimension that we're going to grab. So I'll just open up our um, member, so I'll exit isolate here. So the most critical dimension um, for this pin here is, so let's open it up. Actually, what I, hmm, maybe I'll go a section view here instead. So what we've got like I showed you guys before, this pin passes through a few different elements. Um, basically, the most critical dimension um, for this pin isn't its overall length. So we, you know, I could just draw in, I could just set the whole length to 83.2, but that's not the most critical dimension of this part. The most critical dimension, I would say, would be the distance between uh, the bearings because that's basically driven by the distance between these plates so what I'm going to do I'm going to take a quick measurement um, I'll take it from the back face of this circlip to the back face of this circlip and we'll see that that's 78 millimeters so the distance between the circlips is the most critical dimension here so we want to make the distance between the circlips 78 millimeters um, so I'm going to just add that in now. So we'll go smart dimension and we'll set this distance here from circlip to circlip 
two seventy-eight millimeters, like that. Oops. Cool. And then our part is fully defined. Um, so, oops, that's strange. Cool. There we go. So we can see in the bottom corner here. It also says fully defined, which is brilliant. That's what we want. And uh, everything is black in color. So if I tried to move any of these points or lines, they're locked, which is great. So we've drawn this sketch pretty pretty well. There's fairly minimum number of dimensions. Um, you know, we could have drawn this potentially as like a mirrored part across the middle, um, but it was easy enough just to draw the whole lot. Um, and you know, if if this what if this part was what or didn't down the track perhaps we may have needed to add another circle clip over here or something and then the part would no longer be symmetric um you know a mirror wouldn't work in that case so in this case a mirror may have uh, would have worked but um there's always multiple ways of doing things and it's 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 up to you basically what you um think is the the most e efficient way of doing it um but yeah there's always multiple ways so i'm going to exit this sketch and then i'm going to go features revolved boss base and I'm going to click on this bottom axis here to revolve that. And then I'll click on tick. And cool, so there's our, our shaft. And the last thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add in the chamfers. So we're going to click on this little arrow and then click chamfer. And then we're going to have one millimeter chamfers and we're going to have those on both ends of the part. Like that. Cool. So um, you might be wondering, you know, potentially we could have added the chamfers uh, to this sketch instead, um, just by drawing a line across here, you know, and trimming that off or using the sketch chamfer potentially, uh, which would work as well. Um, so yeah, totally, we could have done that in this case, it probably would have worked. Um, but sometimes the, the sketch fillets and sketch chamfers can actually um, remove some of your key geometry. So I quite like keeping um, chamfers and fillets outside of sketches, just where possible. Um, it's, it's a little bit tricky to uh, explain why um, that's how I like to do it, but um, yeah, you, you'll, you'll find that these sketches are more easy to update um, and more robust if you, if, you, if you don't add in sketch fillets and sketch chamfers, um, because they can basically delete, say I put a, sh a fillet in here, it actually delete this corner point um, which is quite an important corner point. Um, so just stuff like that. Um, so yeah, what I like to do, um, so we'll exit out of here. I like to add the fillets and the chamfers as features um, up here instead. So I find that's the most robust way of doing it. Um, and yeah, I definitely highly recommend doing it that way um, wherever possible. So lastly, I'm going to chuck a save on this part. So I'm going to go File, Save As. All right, so then I'm going to create a new folder. Uh, let's just put it on my desktop here. I'm going to call it um, Main, something like that. And then what we're going to do, I'm going to start a new folder here. I'm going to call it 02 Suspension. So our suspension system, um, we always give it a 0 or 2 as the identifier. And then inside of here, I'm going to do 0, 2, 0, 1. I'm going to call this upper upper link. So this is the sub-assembly within the suspension model. And inside of here, I'm going to place the part. So our part numbering uh, standard, which I'll also I'll attach. Um, we've got a good doc on explaining how we number parts. Um, but basically, you start off, in this case, it's uh, CH21, chassis 2021, chassis team, underscore, and then you do the assembly, which is suspension, O2, the sub-assembly, which is the upper link, O1, and then the part number within that. So this is our first part. And we'll call this um, something middle pivot pin, something like that, and then we'll save it there. Cool.